Tampa, Clearwater, St. Pete. Uh, today we are talking about tennis, and we have a great guest with us, Matt Piper, who is a referee, and we are discussing uh, tennis, college tennis, professional tennis, and Matt, we're going to go into uh, college tennis, where you were talking about the ruling of no ad scoring, and uh, also no let court. Can you re? Can you retouch that, please? Yes, I was just saying that in college, there's only little differences with the rules, and that's because the uh, coaches get together every year and they decide on certain rules they want to add onto the uh, USTA rules within the ITA. And one of those first rule that they changed was uh, the let rule, so during serve only, that uh, when men were serving, what was happening was the opponent would call an ace as a let, um, because that is possible in tennis to do that, because the the opponent can say that they heard a let, and uh, of course then it would be second, it would be, uh, sorry, redo the first serve. So that was happening often enough that they decided there would be no let in men's tennis in Division One. And that way, um, their aces would, you know, never, never have to be uh, reserved. So, um, if uh, when they're serving, the ball hits the net. If it lands in, the opponent must return it. Right. So, but what are you men, saying? So. Only men, not in girls. Right. Not yet. In why? Men. Why is that? Why one one group get to do it, one group cannot do it? Because the ace that is, you know, the very fast serve that was an ace was happening much more often in men's tennis. In women's tennis, that wasn't really happening where they were claiming a let just to avoid being aced. It was happening a lot in men's tennis. So for some reason, not a problem in women's tennis. So women tennis don't have a let let court rules. No, they don't play the let. They they you know you call let they replay first serve or if it was on second serve you replay second serve. Okay. Um. Now, my understanding is the players were taking advantage of uh, let just to rest or replay the point or. Or pick on their yeah, if they didn't like opponent. if they didn't like how they uh, the serve, you know, if it was for especially if it was an ace, the opponent would just say let, even if there was no let. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, an unrefereed match, there's nothing you can do. If your opponent says let, you gotta you gotta serve it again. So okay. to resolve that, that's when they decided to go to the no let rule. And it's been fine. I, I've really never seen any issues with the way they do it now. Kind of wish the pros would go to that, but they don't have to because they have refereed matches and they have uh, someone in the chair that can monitor the lets. But in a lot of college matches, you don't have that benefit. You do have someone in the chair in most Division One matches, but you don't really, um, in your typical Division Two or Division Three, um, even in some Division One matches, if it's singles, there's going to be one referee per two courts. So you're watching two courts at once. Right. So, so then now a lot of things can happen. So that's that's one reason they decided to do that. Now you've been into refereeing for over 18 years now. Can you share with us what have been the toughest time or toughest situation have you been in? Oh, 
Uh, probably seen just about everything there is to see. Um, I mean, I've had to call the police on parents before because they were, you know, making threatening, uh, threatening remarks towards me um, because they didn't like a ruling I had to make, uh, you know, things like that. I don't know if, we, if you want me to talk about that or if you're talking about with players or college or something like that. Yeah, let's talk I remember about one... it because... Go ahead. Yeah, let's talk about uh, the first one, for example. When you had a poor call police, what was the charge? Well, I uh, this is uh, goes back to when we were talking about in the first time about lateness. Uh, I had a player that I saw that she was here, uh, she was there at the tournament, and uh, her match was called. It was an 8 a.m. match. And she proceeded to dilly dally in that report. And uh, I even went as far over to their car and said, your match has been called. You've already received one game penalty. Let's go. They continued to dilly dally. The dad's like stretching her out and whatever. He's kind of a big guy, kind of a menacing guy, you know, <laughs> he, he was pretending he didn't hear me. Yeah. He was pretending he didn't hear me. So um, then I announced it a little louder, you know, now there are two games because it's been 10 minutes and then got up to three games and they finally decided to wander up to the desk, still walking, <laughs> not in any hurry. So I called it was three games, you know, explained the scenario to the opponent. You're going to be up three games. And then he went nuts. Like he never heard of such a thing. And, uh, he's threatening to say I'm the worst ref ever and all this. And then he started threatening me personally saying, I better watch out, things like that. And uh, physically, you know, he was intimidating anyway, um, just by his stature, he's a big guy. So just to be safe, I called the police. I asked him to, you know, stay away from the match. And uh, he complied once he saw police in the area. Yeah. What did the police do? Did they remove him from the site or uh, he stayed in on site? Far once, it didn't, didn't have to go that far. Once he saw that there was police around, I didn't have to have him cuffed or anything. <laughs> But, you know, I've had to step in between parents and students sometimes. Uh, you know, a parent berating his child after he lost the match and then he's, he's hitting the child on the head. You know, I have to step in and say, hey, that's not allowed. I can't can allow you to do that. That's very, uh, um, you know, that's not comfortable. It's uncomfortable to do that. But, you know, so you it's saw necessary. Parents hitting, you saw right. parents hitting a kid on the court or off the court. Well, off the court as they're walking, you know, he's kind of hitting him with his hat. I don't feel like he was, you know, had actually hurt him, but it was enough where I felt like I should say something before, you know, it was going to be something where he could have hurt him. But he was very upset. He was yelling and stuff, and it wasn't, you know, it was just to me. I said, you know, I don't want to tell you to discipline your son, but you please can't do anything physical. You know, let's just go. I'm sure he tried his best. I mean, I tried. I don't know exactly what I said, but I was just trying to smooth the situation over get them out of the way so right. that wouldn't be a worse situation did the person obey you or they continue doing it? yeah yeah i don't think he you know once he saw what he was doing probably realized it wasn't right and um, maybe i don't know what he did once he got that child back home or anything but uh, that's the thing sometimes these parents can be a little um take it a little serious and the results and everything when really it's just honestly Bottom line is it's a game, and the kids should enjoy playing. And I'm sure that uh, if they're they have an ambitions and things like that, but in the in the end, it is a game. It is a game, yes. And any other incident you can uh, share with us? Uh, I have a funny anecdote. You know, a funny anecdote with pro with pro players, if you want, <laughs> that just comes to mind. Uh, right. Yeah, I was doing a charity tournament for. Uh, I have two actually from that match um, doing cherry tournaments and it's um, Andre Agassi is on my end where I'm calling a line that I've never called before. It's the long line um, baseline. And I usually don't have to worry about that. You know, usually I'm doing a long line, but this was a baseline. So I'm calling balls in or out um, if they go out. Well, Agassi on the other end. Um, he returned serve and the ball went long. So I said, out. I thought, you know, you say this loud, so I say it loud. 
And uh, Agassi goes, thanks. Well, it turns out that the, it wasn't necessary for me to call the ball out because the serve was long. <laughs> so it was a little funny there. I could say it out. Like, this was on TV, too. <laughs> I said out really loud, and it wasn't even necessary because the serve was long. But I, where I'm sitting, I can't, yeah, I can't see the serve. I can't, especially when Marty Fish is serving. You know, he's serving so fast, I have to assume – if Andre returned it, he returned it because it was in. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. And then uh, right. I remember being behind Maria Sharapova on the line. Um, she's returning serve, and I'm trying to call that line. And she, she, it was a wide serve. She spun right in front of me, and I didn't get to call the line. I couldn't see it, so I didn't make a call. And uh, usually the chair will help you out in that situation, but they all looked at me like I'm supposed to make a call. I never saw the ball. <laughs> All I saw was Maria Sharapova. So <laughs> the player, was, uh, quite the player a distraction. was the player yeah. was shadowing the ball. Well, she would moved right in front of him where I would have been able to make the call. And you know, she's Maria yeah. Sharapova. She's she's tall, <laughs> and a little bit of a distraction the way she looks. <laughs> so yeah, I missed that one. Yeah. Um. Now let's move into. Um, before it was only one ball. Now we notice there is an orange ball, there's a green dot, and this is a, you get a lot of questions from the parents. Let's start start with this orange ball. I believe it was designed for kids with the less ability to play a tennis tournament. And yeah, well, we actually, just... yeah, sure. It starts with red ball. Um, the red ball the largest and the ball with the least amount of compression and that's for the ones just starting out you know up to eight years old um just learning the game so they made that ball very big it's almost like a softball um like a sponge ball basically and that's what you start out with when you're really young and then they have the orange ball which is about the size of a tennis ball but a little bit bigger and it has orange on it could be a dot or it could just be part of the ball is orange and that's again less compression and a bigger ball and that the idea is that players have more time to hit the ball and they can see it better when they're younger, when it's that uh, little difference there. You know, it gives them more time. Uh, they also have different dimensions on the courts for younger players. They play in a smaller court. Right. And then the, uh, the green dot ball is for when they're just about ready to play regular yellow ball tennis. Um, and the green dot ball is the same size as a tennis ball, but it has less compression. And then at that point, they could use the whole court, but the uh, ball has less compression, so they have more time. Right. So with the red ball, if you have to talk to a parent to advise a parent, how long can that eight years or seven years or stay before he graduated to orange ball? Um. I mean, there's a whole progression that they have to follow as far as how many matches, but a couple of tournaments of red ball, you know, you can move pretty quickly up to the orange ball. As long as you're able to rally back and forth and keep the ball in play, um, you can graduate to orange ball. It doesn't even matter what age you are, as long as you're under under 10. And then orange ball to green ball, there's the format also. Yeah, there's another set of progression. I think it's at least five matches, but I could be wrong on that. I'd have to look it back up. Generally, they know, though, and then once they've done five tournaments or so with so many matches, they can participate in some green ball tournaments, and then they're ready ready to play with the uh, regular balls. That's when after they turn 10. Once they turn 11, they have to, of course, play um, the regular balls. So if you're 11, regardless of your skill level, you cannot play with the green dot. You have to go with the regular ball. Yeah, right now, as far as I know, that's that's how it is. Um, there are some rookie tournaments, and uh, you know, they may change that for next year. I'm not sure, but there are definitely some um, rookie tournaments where players are not quite ready yet for the intermediate level so they stay in the rookie level and they play with regular balls but the, the scoring is a little bit modified you know they play shorter sets um usually no head scoring and still trying to get used to playing you know before they come to a regular uh billable tournament 